Michael, as a person is considering supplementation with a probiotic, um, when we look at DDS-1, can you tell us there's, there, about the manufacturing process itself, the, the concern that goes into being sure that when you receive it that you're getting an active product? Sure. A uh, little bit of background, Tom. Dr. Shahani, who founded Nebraska Cultures and uh, discovered and developed the DDS-1 strain of L. acidophilus, focused on sort of two areas of research. One was the beneficial properties of DDS-1, which are well documented. And then the other was how to keep the strain alive, because the challenge in probiotic bacteria and in taking supplements and manufacturing supplements is making sure that they're alive when you receive them and when you take them as a consumer. And so he developed a stabilization system after many uh, years of trial and error. You know, his research spans 40 years, actually and developed a system for stabilizing these bacteria. So it's important to make sure that they're alive. And uh, you know what manufacturers do and what we recommend is that they start with more bacteria than are actually claimed on the label. Because all probiotic bacteria are going to slowly die off over time. That's just the way they're going to be, especially in a freeze-dried and environment outside of, uh, of the human body. So we know that they're going to die off slowly over time. Fortunately, the DDS-1 strain is a very hardy strain, and we've done research to show just what the die-off rate is. And even at room temperature, uh, the, the stability of DDS-1 is very, very good. But that doesn't mean that it's indestructible. It's important that when a consumer gets a probiotic supplement that they not let it get too hot. Best to store it in a you know, cool and dry place. The, uh, the four uh, the four elements that are very detrimental to probiotics are heat, moisture, light, and oxygen. Those four things will kill off the bacteria uh, before they get to the body. So especially keeping them cool and dry is very, very important. So we recommend keeping probiotics in a, in a cool and uh, dry and dark place uh, before they're consumed. You know, most consumers should take probiotics and take them relatively soon after getting them home. So a probiotic supplement shouldn't stay around in the, in the house for months and months. Uh, uh, if, it's, if it's bought from a reputable source, um, maybe directly from the manufacturer or the producer, then we know it's not going to have been sitting on a store shelf for maybe three or four weeks before you bring it home where we don't know what the temperature in that store has been. It comes straight from a manufacturer, so it comes straight to the consumer. You keep it in a cool, dry place, and you use it up in a month or so, and uh, we know that uh, you're getting the right numbers of bacteria in the body. When a consumer is looking at a product, uh, looking at the label, their manufacturers show, uh, use different methods of telling you mm -hmm. about the stability. <clears throat> you may see sometimes a statement about a guarantee at the time of the time it was manufactured, right. and others may guarantee a, a certain potency uh, at a later date. Yes. What what can the, you, the consumer, uh, glean from the information on the label? Well, even a product that says that the product's going to be good through a certain date, uh, it's up to the consumer to take care of the product. Uh, as I said, probiotics are not indestructible, so mm -hmm. it's important to keep it in a cool, dry place. But if a manufacturer says it's going to be good through a certain date, uh, if stored properly then that means they've taken the time and the trouble to research that information, that they're probably starting with more live bacteria in that supplement than are claimed on the label because, as we all know, they're going to slowly die off over time. And so you know that the manufacturer's taken the, the effort and, and is a reputable manufacturer and that they are over-formulating the product to the point that we know it's going to be still alive at the end of the time. A, a product that says good at uh, time of manufacture or this number of bacteria at the time of manufacture really isn't telling you very much because by the time you get that product, uh, it may not have that number of bacteria in it. So a product that, on the other hand, says that it is good through a, through a certain period of time, uh, as you say, has probably been over-formulated, that is putting more uh, a live culture bacteria in Probably there been over-formulated, <clears throat> and uh, it's important to follow the directions mm -hmm. on that product mm -hmm. for storage. Because but on the other hand, as you mentioned earlier, uh, the fact that there is this over amount in there is, is not is, is no reason for concern because... Oh, absolutely you really not. Can't you're get getting more than much. you're paying for. Yeah, yeah. You can't possibly overdose on the probiotics, mm -hmm. and it's the sign of a reputable manufacturer, in fact. 
there's an end. Thank you, Michael.